Tonight's guest is Adam. Adam, welcome to the show. Hello, Vic. How are you? Getting things done. As long as I can say that, then it can't be too bad. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. Life is good. Well, as long as you can say that, that's a good thing. Adam, please give us a brief bio on yourself. I'm 34 years old. I am from the island province of Newfoundland, Canada. I do prospecting for a living, so I spend a lot of time in the woods. I like go with them. It's only ever me and my dog, and we go for tens of kilometers out sometimes. And I love spending time in the nature and being by myself in nature and everything about it, really. I have two kids. They're teens now, and uh, I've been moving around all over the island. My uh, for the past, I would say, 15 years, just bouncing around from place to place, depending on where I'm prospecting at the time. So I've seen a lot of the island. I've seen a lot of nature and stuff. So nothing really ever surprises me with uh, the place I'm from. The area I'm from is Val Pity Harbor. And uh, there's a lot of old history here. Um, we were one of the first known settlements in all North America. It was settled in the 1600s, roughly. And we have a lot of stuff that I never really paid attention to before until I've had my first encounter. So, yeah, that's my bio. It's funny, like I told you the first time we spoke, even your new places are older than our old places. So, yeah, you've yeah, been they for are. a while. They're pretty old. Everything is old <laughs> out this way. Well, it just means a lot of good history. You had your first dogman encounter about 10 or 11 years ago, Adam, in a town called Torbay in Newfoundland there. What can you tell us about the place? It's out in uh, a road called Baleen Line. And when I first moved there it was starting to get developed um the road was pretty barren like say probably even two years prior before i moved to the area just picture a road cutting straight through the woods and that is what it is and just people started putting houses on it and um there was a subdivision getting built when my first encounter happened so i'm not entirely sure that had something to do with deciding but it's a quiet place like it was a place that, was, that like you would often see moose like it's in the middle of everything so it wasn't strange to see a moose out that way is it that way across all of newfoundland where pretty much you go outside and at any time you could almost bump into a moose or or only certain areas of newfoundland uh, that certain way? areas i would say the area that i'm in right now um Pity Harbor, it's it's really hilly. So like unless you're up on top of the hills, up further away from the, the ocean, your chances are seeing like a moose or something. You might, but not usually in the general area that I'm in now, like but out towards bottling line that way. Where I had my first encounter was it's very de- like like you're in the middle of nowhere up that way. But in Pity Harbor, it's a small nick community. So like everybody knows everybody and all the houses are like bunched together, but there is a lot of wilderness down here. I will say that like, it's just like if you take a bunch of houses and put them in the middle of nowhere and then that's how you get our communities. And there's like nothingness in between the communities. So it's a pretty desolate place. Sounds like a great dog man habitat to me. No wonder. After you had that first encounter, it seemed like it was almost like the wheel came off. You started to have experience yeah. after experience with dogmen. Do you think you were marked somehow? To be honest with you, I think I might have, like, without, like, knowing it at the time. Like, because I've been out in the woods since, like, I've been 14 years old. Like I said, I'm 34 now, so a long time in the woods. And I think, like, I might have, like, did something or might have upset him in his natural place out when I was out there doing something like it could have been like I go when I prospect like I go break up minerals and if I need to get a specimen tested in the lab I have to take something back with me so I'm not sure if it was like I don't know it could be something as simple as me 
taking a rock that belonged to him. It could have been something that belonged to him, or I could have just did something out one day in the middle of nowhere. But I know that there's something to it because ever since that day, it's been constant, right? Like it's been uh, it's been unnerving because I don't know what I did to uh, to start it all. Yeah, I'll bet it has been unnerving. It's been one experience after the next, unfortunately. You said that you're a prospector. What do you prospect for, and how long have you done that? I've been uh, prospecting now, shoot, well, career-wise since I was, I'm going to say, 23. I've been rock hounding as a, like, a hobby since I was a kid. Now, I've only started getting into it like financially like I said, since I'm about 20, probably 23 or 20, like 22 or 23, I think I was, when I started actually doing it to make money. Um, here in Newfoundland, the area I'm in now is not my favorite area for it because I'm only getting um, jasper, agates, different type of healing stones, basically, right? It's coming in, a, 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 it's, a it's a glacial till site, so, you know, I, I got a claim on down here. But in Gander, I was working gold claims. We get uh, gold, it comes up from the ground in uh, in quartz veins. So it's nothing like you see on TV, like go to the river and pan for gold or anything like that. Everything you do out that way is you got to have every equipment, like everything you're using, rock saws and drills and taking core samples and stuff like that. There's a really, uh, a really big gold boom in uh, central Newfoundland right now. Wow, that sounds like a lot of really hard work. How hard is it for you to do that kind of work, though, knowing what could be watching you at any time from the shadows? It's affected me to the point right now, like before I had this encounter, like my first, well, it wasn't my first, it was the second one that really did it for me. But after, like, I never thought of not, not about it after my very first one. And I just used to do my own thing. So... I'd just go do my own thing. The only thing I ever really worried about is moose because we have moose here and we have black bear, some lynx and some bobcat. And every now and again, a coyote. Nothing really big that I'm scared of, scared of, right? Like more scared of a moose than anything else. And um, I always took my dog with me. Dog's always been with me because you're not allowed to use fire animal unless you're a hunter. You're not allowed to have uh, firearms here, so um, I don't do any hunting. So I would only ever took bear mace or something with me like that. But I never really thought about it until my second encounter. And after that, I do not go more than like two kilometers out. Like there's a cutoff point for me now where it's like, if that can do bad happen, I'm too far away. But in saying that, I always have a list before I leave. I have a checklist to like, different type of gear I take with me. I take a satellite phone with me or something like that. I take food. I take extra food. I take rain gear. I look at the weather before I leave. I tell people where I'm going and when to expect me back. And if I'm not back at a certain time, then to do that. But like I said, ever since the second encounter, it hasn't been the same. I haven't been doing what I love to do anymore, right? So it, it's definitely affected me. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure these experiences have. Yeah, that's totally normal. So sorry to hear that's the case, though. All right, Adam, you've got a lot to tell us about. Please tell us about your encounters now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. My first encounter took place about 10 or 11 years ago in Balin Lawn. It was, uh, I would say, middle of the day. I was out on my patio having a cigarette. It's a bad habit, but um, I was out having a cigarette and I was just doing my thing and I was looking down the driveway. I had a straight view straight down the driveway. I would say it's about 50 meters down the driveway to across the road. And the woods here is really thick. Like if something was standing like three feet behind the wood line, you wouldn't see it. But there was, I, I'm not sure how long the stretch, but there's a gap between the wood line across the road from my driveway. And I was looking down there and a moose, a big full grown bull moose, I think 
probably the biggest one I ever seen. It came running and I'm going to guess it like from the size of the uh, area that it ran through. It might have took 20 steps maybe till it was gone. But it, like I was thinking to myself at the time, it's strange because we like, why is it running? I never seen a moose run like that before in my life, unless there was a car or something, but there's no cars. And then like I was, I never had the thought process and I seen a big white mass and it leaped from one end, well, from one, the big, the beginning of the meadow to the opposite side after the moose. It didn't touch the ground, not once. And like I was telling Vic, I didn't see no, I didn't see the front or the rear paws. I saw a head and a tail. The head I couldn't, like, like like I said, it happened that fast. I could not pick out any details. I seen a head. The head was really big. I know that. And it looked unproportionalized, like the head from the rest of its body. And it had a really long, fluffy tail. And the animal was completely white. Like, I've never seen a wild animal that was white be so clean. But, look, it happened in the blink of an eye. If I had to turn my head to look at my door behind me and look back, I wouldn't even have noticed. After that sighting, I stayed around on my front deck and waited around because I was going to take a picture of it. And it never, ever did come back. So uh, it was later that night. We were getting ready to go to bed or we might have been, been in bed. We were lying down or something, me and my ex-girlfriend at the time. And we started getting window tapping. And it was like tap, tap. Tap. And then, like, we thought somebody was out there, so we went to look. We went to look out the one window, and this was funny because it happened to us like it was almost like it was playing tr- tricks on us. We'd look out one window, and the window opposite side of the house, we would get a tap on. And at the time, we did not, um, we did not correlate the uh, what I seen that day with the window tapping. I've never, I've never heard anything about a dog man, or I've never even heard anybody talking about a Bigfoot, anything like that in I'm a, in my province. So that that thought was in the back of my mind, like wasn't even there. So uh, the window tapping continued on and off for I would say the whole time we were there. It wasn't every night thing. It was like it happened one night and then two or three nights after it had happened again. It was always random, different times of the night too. Sometimes it would be in the middle of the night and it would wake us up. But it was always like you go check one window and like I said, you'd, you'd hear it on the opposite end of the house. As soon as you go check it. But that continued the whole time we were there. So we moved. I had a family member back home, back in Pity Harbor, get sick. So I wanted to move back home and help take care of them. And, uh, when I moved back, uh, we were living, okay, so Pity Harbor, the, my hometown, Pity Harbor, it's actually called, his full name is Pity Harbor Maddox Cove. And the reason it's called that is there's a hill in between the community from one end of the community to where I live. So my mom lives in the Pity Harbor section, and I live in the Maddox Cove section. i would never lived down that section before in my life. And we were pretty happy to be back home, and I, we were there for a while. We never got no taps or nothing for a while. And then I think one random night again, started getting window taps. And at the time still, I didn't put two and two together. And this one night, I can remember it was one of the, one of the scarier things that happened to me. Um, uh, me and my ex-girlfriend, we were lying down to sleep. We were, we were in bed asleep and I got a, a little beagle. His name is Blue, and he don't. He's he's not really like a growly type of dog. I, I I never heard him growl really. A couple of times, and this one night he woke us up and he was growling and he's growling bad. And the the place that we were living, I'm still living in, it's like the basement half of a house. So um, uh, my bed is up against the wall, but the window is I'd say halfway up the wall. So like you're. It was behind us. So we woke up and he was growling, but he was growling, looking at us. And we were like, is he looking at us growling? And then we realized 
he was growling at something behind us in the window, and both of us, I think, looked at the same time. And we, all we can come out of it when we stop to talk about it afterwards was a bit like my window is probably four feet wide and four feet long, probably you'd say. And this head was almost a whole circle, like the whole window almost. It came in almost like a bluff charge, but <laughs> it, I, I'm thinking it has pretty good reflexes because it hit my window. It hit my window, and I thought it was coming through the window, but its nose hit it. When its nose hit it, it backed up, and it was almost like a snake strike. It happened that fast. It was like if, if you blink, you wouldn't miss it, and it was just gone. So <laughs> that experience uh, scared us pretty bad. Uh, um, I took a lot of convincing not to move out of there um, to my ex. We uh, ended up switching, well, my place got two bedrooms, one in the front, one in the back. So we were living, staying where our bedroom was in the back of the house. So we, the next morning we moved to the front of the house, needless to say. And, uh, and it just, just that was the first time I had an experience in Pity Harbor. Now the window tapping continued, continued the whole time we were there. And I, still to this day, I still don't know what's up with the window tapping. But I would say. Well, five years ago, I got a really good job offer to go work out in a gold mine in Gander. And while I was out there, I was going to try to get a, a claim, a stake a claim for myself. And I ended up doing that. And uh, it was going good. It was like everything was going perfect for us for a while. And like we never had no tapping because I'd be like, we were renting. The apartment I had in Pity Harbor and still renting one out in Gander so I can come back and forth and help my sick family member. So I was out there about five months now. And just one morning I woke up and I was pretty bored. I had nothing to do. I'd say it was probably like 6 30 or something when I woke up. And I already had the day before. I, uh, because whenever I go to, uh, go prospect and I'll always the day before go online. Mark it on a map. So, well, first of all, search it on a map, find a good area. I use this Google Maps mixed with topographical maps to find good areas to prospect. So, I found this one area and it was at the bottom of a hill, an old ski resort. The ski resort was abandoned, I believe, in the 80s. So, I'd like, I talked to one of the locals out there and he said it closed down in the 80s. So, that's all I understand, so I'm not from the area. It's about a five-hour drive from here. So this one morning, I got up and I got ready and got all my gear together. And my house was the one that I was staying at at the time in Gander. It was right next to a highway, a four-lane highway. And the area that I had planned on prospecting was across the highway in about five-minute walk up the street, or up the highway. And you would hit a tourist information booth. A tourist information booth was in the air general area where the ski resort lodge would have been before they tore it down. So there's a gate behind the tourist information place and the hikers and people uses all the old uh, ski routes for hiking trails and stuff, I guess. So the area that I needed to get to was at the bottom of the hill. I don't, I don't know how long the hill is. I should have looked it up, but I think it's like two or three kilometers from top to bottom. It's not like a steep, steep hill. It's more of a long hill than anything. And um, the area I chose was down by a lake, like a big giant lake called uh, Gander Lake. And I was down there and doing my thing. Like I use a rock hammer when I'm breaking rocks open. And certain rocks I like, you can feel when you pick them up that how heavy they are. And like, you can almost tell they, no, I'm not going to be able to break this one open, but you're going to try to anyways. So I had this rock and I hit it four times. And I think after the fourth time, I was like, no, I'm not even going to like, sometimes I'm after hitting rocks and like hurting my elbow. So I'm like, no, I'm just going to lay that down. It's not worth it. So as soon as I laid it down, I heard the exact same noise. Well, it sounded to me the exact same noise as what I just made with the rock hammer hitting the rock. It would make a high pitch ting sound like 
ding, ding, when it would hit a rock that it couldn't break. And I heard in response four taps back. And I knew at this point that I was at the bottom of the hill by myself because the parking lot, there was no other hikers' vehicles there. And I would have seen anybody if they had come down that area. And like I did like watch Bigfoot shows and stuff like growing up and I've heard of like wood knocks and stuff like that, but I've never heard, I don't know, like, it could be a thing, but I've never heard of like rocks getting clanked together, but it sounded like rocks getting clanked together, but like with a metal ping to it. And that started, just startled me, right? So I turned around to look at my dog to see if he was out, right? And he will always like, he's after saving me from like, bobcats and stuff not like actually fight a bobcat out but like he'll bark and let me know there's something there and then i'll look and see a bobcat I'm like okay thanks i didn't know that was there type thing you know and we'll move on you know same with moves and other stuff right he's after help me with that but this one time he wasn't barking he wasn't doing the growling nothing he was opposite i was faced one way he was opposite direction of me uh, Probably would have been the left hand side, and he was just laid there, and he was just crying. You know, and like I never seen him do that. It's almost like he just submitted whatever was there. He didn't want to have nothing to do with. It. He just, you know, just gonna lie down and deal with it. So he did. And with that, I heard a branch break, a really big branch. It almost sounded like somebody took a tree and broke it. And I said, okay, enough of this. It doesn't take much to scare me. Like. So I'm out in the well, especially you're out in the woods for so long, you know what you hear, like you're used to the sounds, right? Like stuff that I was hearing down there that morning, I was never heard before the whole time I've been out in the woods all over the years. So I just said, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. We're going to leave. So I untied him as quick as I could. And we started walking up the path the way we came. It wasn't very long we were on the path. I started hearing something on the left hand side of me. And the path is only break. I'm not joking with you. Um uh probably five, six feet wide, if that maybe. Possibly even four. It used to be wide ski trails, but they all got overgrown, I was told. But from the left hand side I was hearing walking. And I would walk faster. And as I would walk faster, it got faster. But it didn't seem like it was getting faster. It didn't seem like it was using any effort. And then that's when rocks started getting thrown at us. Well, not me, but my dog. And, like, not small rocks, like rocks the size of my head. And, like, it kept happening. So I just took off as fast as I could. And this thing, whatever it was, was on the left-hand side of me. It followed me up the whole time. Flicking rocks and it didn't and it didn't like it like it didn't seem to stop to pick up the rocks. Just a strange thing, like when I'm thinking I'd stop and look for a rock to throw. Nope. This thing would just follow me the whole way up and throw rocks. And it discontinued about three quarters the whole way up the up the hill until I just about seen the tourist information center again. When I I, I, I remember in my mind seeing the corner of it and as soon as I seen it it just stopped, just instantly stopped. I never heard nothing chasing me, no more rocks got thrown, but I didn't stop. I did not stop. I kept running and I ran home. <laughs> and I think at the, my girlfriend at the time, she wasn't home. So I was like at home and I had all this built up energy, like looking at the windows, like did it follow me and like all this other stuff. And she eventually got home and, uh, I told her about it and I'm like, I think I had a Bigfoot experience, not never ever heard of a dog man or anything like that. And uh, being a normal person, you know, she just kind of laugh and be like, no, that didn't happen yet. So she didn't believe me. Right. And uh, I think it was a couple of days after that, the window started tapping, started again. And my theory with the window tapping is because the first time we moved, it took a little while for the tapping to start start up again. And the same time, just about when I moved five hours away, which is a really long drive, 
it took like months for the tapping to start. And I'm thinking the months in between or weeks, however long it was, I'm thinking that's how long it took me, took them to find me again. But I'm after moving from literally farthest you can go east to the middle of the island. And that found me, man. It might have took a long time, but it found me. But uh, so uh, sometime later, I, I'm no, no good with like remembering dates and stuff, guys. I apologize. But um, sometime later, I was sitting down on, the, on my computer. I run a, a, a rock identification group on Facebook. Like somebody posts a rock on Facebook and I, me and a couple of moderators, we try to help identify through pictures and we ask them to do tests and stuff. But I was on moderating a group that morning and I had my front window open and it was a beautiful, beautiful morning, man. And there was no traffic. There's nobody up. And this place I lived in Gander, it was next to, like, Gander's not a big town at all. It's a pretty small town. But it, the, sit, the spot that I was living in it was almost, you would say, like a subdivision area. Like there was houses around. But this one morning when I had, like, I think it was a couple minutes after I opened the window, I sat back down on the computer and I heard the most ungodly loudest sound I ever heard in my life. It scared me so bad at first. Like I almost fell out of the chair. It woke my, my, my ex up. She ran, woke up, ran upstairs and it, continued for about five or six minutes and i could try to make noise but i, I don't want to sound silly or nothing but um after like uh the initial scare it sounded like it was mourning something or it was crying it was like it's so strange like if you like i've never seen a wolf like we had wolves here apparently a hundred years ago but they all got killed off now there's some, apparently there's some sightings on the west of the island, but I've never seen the whole time I've been in the woods. I never heard nothing, never seen nothing, nothing like it. But like if you see like a movie, like you it makes a wolf sound, but like a demonic sound, and like I don't know how to explain it. That's how it sounds, but it sounded sad at the same time. Like after getting scared first, it just sounded sad. And even even my ex girlfriend at times she said it sounds sad. It sounds like it's hurt. Sounds like it's hurt or it's crying or something, but I could tell where the sound was coming from. It sounded like it was coming from, like, let's say, like a T shape and roughness, right? So, like, I lived on, that's hard to explain, actually. I, I can tell which house it was coming from the woods behind a certain house, but the sound sounded like it was sitting in my front yard. It sounded like its head was in my window, like yelling. That's how loud it was. It would like vibrate, at, like, and inside, just listening to it. So after that happened, I started going on YouTube to uh, see if I can find a sound I can compare it to. And it took me a while, actually. And then after a while, I did find a video. I think it was called uh, Strange Noises Heard in Canadian Woods. I think that's what it's called. And it's the exact same noise. And I know it's the exact same noise because... When I was listening to the video, I turned it up loud so I can hear it more clearly. And when I did, my ex at the time, she came running back upstairs. She said, is it back? Is it back? Is it back? So I'm like, yeah, that's the same noise I heard, right? But it sounded like I said, it sounded like it was crying. And that's the only vocal I ever got from him. I've never heard him other than that. That's like the only vocal I got from it. But uh, was it for that day? Um this next one, uh, this is why we, we moved back home from, from Gander. Um, one night I was on the uh, computer and after hearing that video and realizing it was the same noise, I think I was reading through the comments or something. And that's how I came across Dogman. It was through that video. And uh, I think I was watching one of Vic's videos, I think at the time because i was like interested and i'm like okay some other people are seeing what i'm seeing so i'm not going crazy i don't think and <laughs> i was watching videos and um my my girlfriend at the time she would always take her kid and walk up the road to her friend's house her friend's house maybe 10 houses up the road not very far like five minute walk probably 
So I was waiting home from for them uh, to come back down from uh, her kid playing with her friend's kids. And I was chilling. And next thing you know, it's like, here's screaming. And then I realize it's her screaming. So I'm like, oh, my God. So I runs out the door. And like, as I'm running out the door, I'm running out the driveway and up road to meet her. She's like, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. I'm like, what, what's there? She's like, a big wolf, a huge wolf. I'm like, what are you talking about, a huge wolf? And like, I was scanning the area trying to find it, and then I seen it. And it was across the road, I'd say probably, I don't know how many houses up from me at the time, like uh, probably five or six houses up from us. Like, each house is probably 10 feet from each other. And this thing is <laughs> funny at first. It was funny at first because I was laughing. I was like, are you kidding me? Do you see that? And I'm like, I try not to use her name now. I will say her name is Nicole. So I was like, did you see that, Nicole? And she was like, yes, I see it. And the thing, <laughs> now this thing is all white. And it's avoiding the street lights, crawling on it, all fours, almost like an army crawl. And it's crawling around the corners of houses, avoiding the light. And it's thinking that it's not being seen. But I don't think that it realized that it was, it knew it was all white. And I could see it like, and like, it was that white, Vic. Like, the, when the moon hit it, it's almost like a blue shine came off his fur type thing. I don't know if it was lights from a house that did that or what, but there was almost like a blue shine came out. And he continued doing this the whole like whole way down until about two houses across from us. And when he got about like I said, two houses across from us, we came to a corner and it would like if you were facing the opposite side of the road from you and looking at a house, on the left side of that house, the corner, the front corner and the left hand side. It got to there, and I thought up until then it was just a giant, huge wolf. And it stood up. It literally stood up and put its hand on the corner of the house. And we just, like, were speechless when this happened. I could see details on it this time I, I got a good look at him this time and he had like we got no raccoons or nothing here so like but i'm after seeing videos of raccoons and stuff he had really long fingers but he had a human hand he had a human hand but the fingers were really long i wouldn't be able to tell you the color of his nails or nothing because it was dark and still a bit far away but i could see that he had like really muscly long arms. Like it was almost like if even if he hunched over a little bit, it was almost like as if his fingers would just be barely off the ground. And he had really his head was huge. His head was huge. It's almost like cartoony looking, right? Like way bigger than his head. I had a pre recording with me and Vic. I said it, it kinda of look I don't know if any of the viewers could know, but at, like there used to be a show that came out in the like nineties, I believe, called Street Sharks. Basically, like action, like big muscly dudes with giant shark heads. And that's what it looked like to me. But it was a wolf. And he's, he had really, like, really pointy teeth. And it had really big, like, his face was almost like, a, like, a, I don't, I'm not going to say German Shepherd because it was fluffier than, like, what a German Shepherd's face would be. It was the same shape as it. And then, like, Almost same, like, same general structure, I would say. But it's had ears. Its ears were, like, abnormally long and really pointy. And they had these, like, little tassels at the end of the ears. I almost looked like, uh, if you look at a picture of a uh, hourglass, I almost looked like his ears had, like, I don't know how to explain it. There's, like, little bits on the ends of his ears. It was kind of weird. <laughs> Weird, but uh, that's what I got out of it when I'd seen him. Like, I like I got a good view, but I didn't at the same time because I, I actually seen him. But as soon as he stood up and put his arm on the, the corner of the house, it made, I don't know if the noise came from it or the house, because when it stood up, it laid its hand on it on the house. 
and it made a really loud creaking noise. I don't know. I think because this thing was like had had to be like at least seven or eight feet tall, and it looked like it weighed a lot. So I'm thinking the corner of the house, a lot of pressure went on it, and it made a really loud like cracking, like snapping sound. And um, when that happened, a light came on on the inside of the house. And I guess whoever was in there, I don't know who lived there, woke up and they turned the light on. And when that happened, it looked, and then as soon as it looked at there, it was just gone. As soon as that was it. But um, I actually skipped the part. Um, I got ahead of myself a bit. There was a time before that when the window started tapping, started in Gander. I seen him once before. I've only ever seen him three times. The time that I just explained was the uh, third and final time. The second time was we were getting the tapping sound, and I got really mad, and I went out to check. And when I went out and checked, there was nothing in the back by the windows, and so I went to go back in. But I heard branches breaking behind me or something. And this was before I seen them that last time I was just telling you guys about. When I went to look, I, I, he was standing straight up at this time. I didn't compare it with wolf or anything because I didn't see a, the head or anything like that. When I looked, all I seen was a seven or eight foot tall figure with a big, long, white, fluffy tail. It's almost like a fox's tail, like a big, long, fluffy tail. Anyways, it just locked into the bush and it just disappeared. That's my second time. I've only seen it three times. But after that experience that she seen it and even our kids seen it too, right? So I had enough of it at that point. I said, no, I'm not doing this no more. We're going back to Pity Harbor. It wasn't very long. I think it was probably two or three weeks later we uh, decided to come back home. I had a claim out there. I sold my claim. I didn't want to have nothing to do with the woods. It really affected me. Like, like um, I tell people, like mom, my mom says to me all the time, how come you're not doing your thing no more? How come you're not talking about your rocks and all that? I don't have no joy left in it. Like, I can't, like, right now I go up to go do it, and it's like any little noise, any little noise, I'm on edge, right? So we moved back home, and we weren't home very long. And the tapping started again after a little while, and I guess she just got sick of it, and. She blamed me for it all, and because I guess she thought that, like, you know, me paying attention to it too much was a cause of it or something. We broke up because of it, anyways. So I was living at home. This is about two years ago now, a year and a half ago, two years maybe. And uh, I've never seen it since that night in Gander. And uh, moved home, and when I was home, I would I started getting the tapping on windows at this point. I'm like still happening to this day, but uh, I, I've become accustomed to it, right? So, like, sometimes I'll be doing my thing and it could be happening, and I'm at the point now I don't even hear it. Like, I'm I've become accustomed to it, right? But I started getting whistles really early in the morning, like four or five o'clock in the morning. I started getting whistles and like, had to be outside like my bedroom had to be because every time like my windows are closed and I sleep I sleep with my windows closed even if it's warm night but it woke me up and it's like uh, I can try to make the sound it sounds, sounds like a human almost but I know it's not a human because nobody gonna be up at four o'clock in the morning whistling outside my window and anyway it's just like uh it goes like uh it's like a It's like somebody trying to get your attention. I can't whistle for the life of me. Sorry, guys. But uh, it sounds like it's coming. Like sometimes it comes from the front. Sometimes it sounds like it's coming from the back. But don't, it, it, it's hard to explain. It sounds it's almost like it's loud when it wakes me up. And as soon as the closer I get to the door, it gets quieter. But as soon as when it gets to the door, it gets louder. It's hard to explain. But the only feeling I get from it is it's trying to get me outside. So, trying to get me to go outside and that's what started freaking me out a, a, a little bit and that only happened to me like since then probably a handful of dozen times probably like six or seven times probably maybe 
half dozen times probably. But uh, the reason I uh, actually got in contact with Vic um, here lately, I've never had a uh, a uh, encounter or experience or anything like that in my hometown. And I've always figured it was too densely. Like, well, it's not, I wouldn't say dense. I think there's only like 800 people probably, not even down here. And I just figured where all the houses were so close together, not like it could happen. But uh, there's a path I use because my mom, my mom has cancer and I go be sick and I had to come up and help her with it. And um, I come up in the mornings. I usually leave around 630 in the morning, come up in the morning, give her a hand with stuff like I go for my wax, my exercise for the morning. And he usually does the same thing in the evenings. And uh, here lately, every day um, I go up, I get about halfway up. Now, this path, you know, I think it's <laughs> like all Pity Harbor is just hills. There's barely, like no flat roads down here. It's all just up or down. And this one hill, it's like if you go Google map, it'll come up as a, as a road, but it's not an actual road. Well, it was probably it, it was some, it was the main road down here, but it, that was probably 120 years ago. So this road, this path that I takes goes up a mountain about I'm going to say about 0.8 or 0.9 of a kilometer, and then the rest of it, the other it's 1.7 kilometers long. I, I know that that much, and the rest of it's downhill, right? So about halfway going up the hill. Uh, for about two months now, well, since the beginning of summer, I've started getting a really bad smell. And it smells like uh, rotten fish and urine. Sometimes it smells like rotten fish and garbage. And one time it was uh, just straight off feces. It was just, it was, it was, it's gross, whatever it is. But not very long after I get the smell, I start hearing something in the right hand, like you're walking up, it'll be in the right hand side, you're walking back down, it's left hand side. So you're walking up, and I start hearing something in the woods inside me every single time. But it's not as big as the one that I saw in Gander, or heard in Gander, I should say. It doesn't sound as big as that. And um, I haven't been really paying much attention to it until this one day. I was telling Vic how thick the fog is down here. And it could come in, like, it, the weather here changes in the blink of an eye. So this one morning, I woke up to, uh, woke up, got ready, having coffee, and I still go up mountains now. So went to check that, and um, well, I went to do that. And I left, and nothing, nothing, nothing happened. I walked up. I don't even think I smelt anything that day on the way up. But, uh, I'll fast forward it. This is a bit hard to explain because two other people seen what I would think well, they seen something and I seen something, but I can't explain what I seen. They can kind of explain what they seen, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. So when I left, I didn't find this out until I got back later that night. My neighbor, she lives above me. She's from uh, the mainland. So She's after seeing big cats like cougar before. We got no cougars here at all, right? So when I was coming home that 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 night, she stopped me and she said, Adam, did you see that when you left this morning? I was like, did you see what? And I got this really old tree in my backyard, and it's huge. It's got to be every bit of 150, if not more feet high, and it's just this one tree. And she said this big, muscly cat, a big, black, muscly cat, and she said it was like longer than I am tall, walked down the tree. And I said, what do you mean it walked down the tree? It didn't cl crawl down the tree? She said, no, it didn't crawl down the tree. It walked down the tree. Like you picture of an animal walking on flat ground. She said, that's what that did, but down the tree. And I said, when I asked her what color it was, she said it was black. And she said it was a black cougar. And I said, what do you mean a black cougar? So we got no cougars in Newfoundland, and we got no black ones. We definitely don't want to have no black ones, right? 
So that kind of startled me. But earlier that day, when I left to come back home, like I was telling you guys, the fire can come in here pretty quick. So I may, I was up here maybe two hours, an hour, hour and a half maybe. When I went to leave, the fog was bad. It was so bad. I could not see. If I put my hand out as far as I could, I couldn't see my hand. Like when I got up on top of the hill to go back down the path, the path is only about 10 feet wide. I couldn't see on each side of the path. Now, like I said earlier, the path only takes about 20 minutes to walk, 15 minutes for me. Um. I got onto it. I, I don't think I was into it, not even five minutes. And I seen, uh, like, it, it just, like, it slowly came into vision. And in the middle of a path was this black, fuzzy something. After I got off the phone with Vic the other day, I racked my brain. I sat down and tried to think about it and tried to think about what I saw. And at the time, I was like, I've seen a black bear. That's in my mind at the time is a black bear cub because I know it wasn't the size of a full one, but it wasn't the size of, it wasn't exactly the size of a cub either, right? Is it like, and it was re, uh, it was blurry looking to me. I don't know if it was the fog or what. It was blurry looking to me. So I couldn't really, I didn't get any features. I don't know. It was a black mass standing, well, it wasn't standing. It was on, oh, it was, on fours at this time, but it didn't move the whole time. I couldn't see its head to see if it was looking at me or not, but the whole time I was watching it, it didn't move. So, like, to me, that's if it was a black bear, it would have been odd behavior for him because he'd either come towards me or run for me. You wonder he's not gonna, just going to stand there. But, um, <sighs> Like I said, it took me five minutes to get when I witnessed that. I was so scared at the time because I wasn't sure what I was seeing. Like, if it was a cub, I was like, okay, well, first thing that came to my mind was mama bear. So instead of turning around and walking straight out, I decided to slowly back out. And my head was on the swivel the whole way out until that thing went out of my vision. And then I got on the road and walked the road way home. But and after I got home and after my neighbor told me what she had seen, the next morning, my mom, I came back up to help out my mom again. And uh, the next morning, she told me she was up in the middle of the night for some fresh air. And um, she seen what she explained to me was she couldn't tell if it was a dog or a big cat. But she said... It's sitting down. Its head would have been to the bottom of my neck or the bottom of my chin. And I'm five foot eight. So that sitting down is pretty big. But it still wouldn't have been as big as one that I see. So after that day, my kids used to walk that path and go back and forth from their friends. I, I completely stopped my kids from using that path. And I don't. Unless, like, I have to, I try not to use the path as much as I can. But um, I think it's a juvenile. And a couple of nights ago, I'm getting a lot of work done on the place that I'm living down there. I'm getting new windows and doors put in. And uh, that was about five days ago, maybe now. And so I went out after my back windows got replaced. And they're all messy from the, from the guys working and stuff, so... Went out cleaning my windows because I was very proud of my new windows. Made sure they're all sparkly clean. And uh, that night I was making supper or whatever, getting supper. I, I think I, I think it was like Blue's birthday. My dog Blue. I think it was his birthday actually. He went because we were making hamburgers, and uh, we were went out to eat it. And I heard from the kitchen, the kitchen window. I heard tap 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 tap, but it kept on tapping. And it didn't stop. Like, it did stop, but it was a lot longer than what it usually is. And I don't know if it was because of new windows or because, like, I noticed myself how much clearer they are. They were. My old windows were really dirty. But, um, well, I wouldn't say dirty, just old. And it gets, like, a cloudiness to them. 
it was really clear and shiny. So I don't know if it was like seeing itself and just like touching it, like seeing its reflection or something. But uh, the next morning I woke up to, and uh, the guys had all the scaffolding out in the front of the house. They moved it out in the front at this point. And I went to let my dog out for his morning pee or whatever. And uh, when I did, I checked the window. I always checked the back just to make sure nothing's out there. And when I did, there was a print on my window. And it wasn't like a full on like handprint. I, th- I think it's three digits. And it was at the top of my window. Like I said to you guys earlier when I was explaining uh, where the window was in my bedroom, it's the same with all the windows in my apartment. They're about five feet up from the bottom of the floor and to almost the rest of the way up the wall. It's pretty big windows, but in order for an animal that I think or a creature, that I think is the size of these guys, they would have to kneel down to look in, right? So I'm thinking where the print is on top of my window, not the bottom or the middle or anywhere like that. I think he knelt down and rested his hand on the top of my window and he used his other hand to tap. Now, that's just what I'm getting from it. But yeah, that's my, uh, my encounters. Uh, like I said, I've only seen them three times in 11 years, but I have a hard time remembering all the little things because there's like so many little things that happen. It's like, I don't know if I mentioned to Vic the other day when we did the phone interview. Before me and my ex broke up, when we moved back here, we we would get birds. Like, I don't know if they were gifts or something, but it's something. They weren't like, they were dead, obviously, but they weren't uh, like, you know, like somebody like, kill the bird he looked like they're dead it's almost like somebody carefully had him in her hand and was just laying him on my back step it was, that happened that only happened like a couple of times but that stopped as well and uh well a couple of years ago we had a lot of wildlife down here too and how the like like the coyotes we had a bunch of coyotes that were down here they're all gone now they're disappeared and I had, I know of three foxes that I used to see daily. I had one that I always used to sit on my corner of my yard. Um, I used to see him every other day. He they hadn't seen him. And there's two more. And one that I used to see on the path, I haven't seen him no more. And there's one up on the mountains, and I haven't seen him no more. And what else, Gone um, Grouse. There's a lot of grouse here. There's no grouse down here no more. I haven't seen any. Same with rabbits. Any small animals, there's none around. But when I'm having, I did notice when I'm having like more than like two or three window taps a week. That's when you see like moose running through the community and stuff like that. Um, it's like the, the moose know that these things won't follow them into town because they're going to get, it's so weird once you like connect the dots. I don't, I don't know. I could just be that overthinking it, but that's my thought. Like these things, when they're around the moose, are that scared of them. They're willing to just walk through the town. Not like moose cares about a person anyways, but it's not very often you like a moose just goes straight up walk through the middle of your town. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's my, that's everything I got. I hope it, uh, it helped somebody out there. I know a couple of your guys' stories helped me out. So thank you very much for listening. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, that is quite a bit. Those are a lot of experiences. I'll tell you what, Adam, we're out of time tonight, but would be up for coming back Friday night to do a live stream so I could ask you a bunch of questions about your experiences. And that way also you could field some questions from the listeners in the live chat. Yeah, sure. I I would 100% be down for that. Oh, good. Well, if that's the case, then yeah, we'll just put the questions on hold until then, and we'll have you come back so we can do that. But in the meantime, thanks again so much for coming on and doing this in the first place. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. No problem. Uh, I'd I'd like to say thank you very much, too, because uh, this takes a huge weight off my chest. It's like I felt for long while I couldn't tell anybody about it. And I want to let everybody know that it's okay to talk about these things and they are out there. So stay safe and be careful, everybody. 
You know, when you have experiences like this with dogmen, but you can't talk about these experiences you've had, like I've said before several times, it's like a prison with no walls. It's just not a good feeling at all. So I'm just glad to be able to provide a way for you to put these experiences out there and talk about them. Yes, I'm glad there's a uh, somewhere to go with it, right? Because there's nothing worse than having something like that stuck in your head. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's not good at all. Well, thanks again so much for your time, Adam, and we'll talk to you Friday.